Hello and welcome to this kind of short video about Haskell, infinite lists and prime numbers. So Haskell is kind of infamous for allowing infinite data structures because it's lazy, so things are only evaluated when you need them. And this allows you to do nice tricks like the following. You might have seen this code as a definition for the list of all prime numbers. And it's just a one top level definition that gives you the list of all prime numbers. And it does something with sieves and filtering and it's kind of hard to see what's happening here. So first let's see if it actually works. We can add this to our um, REPL here, our interpreter, and then we can look at primes and indeed that's it's a long list and um, okay I can abort now. These all are supposed to be primes, um, I'm not sure, but let's look at the first 10. Yeah that, that looks like prime numbers. So what is happening here? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from the code a little bit I would say, uh, but it's really nice to see what's happening inside the running program, inside the memory. And for that, I'll first let me um, reset the calculation. So I'll unadd the sieves module, add it again. And then I'll reuse a, a tool called ghgvis, created by Dennis Felsing, which allows us to inspect the running heap of the Haskell program. Uh, I can start it up with this and now we have this nice tool here and then I can view the primes and we see it's a thunk. So a thunk is an unevaluated expression. Nothing has, we haven't used the primes value here yet so we don't know what it is. Uh, you can ignore the these messages over here. So let's maybe check um, is the list of prime numbers is that empty? No it's not empty there are prime numbers that's clear. So if you now update the view we see, ah, something has happened. And we see, okay, the prime numbers, you can ignore the indirection, that's something that's not worth worrying about. But we can see it's a console. You see the column here, that's the, um, the list con constructor. And because we've checked whether it's empty or not, the only thing we know is, okay, it's a console, and then there's more things down here. So if we look further at the list, Let's say we take the first oh, let's take seven prime numbers from there uh, and we update the view again then of course more has happened. We now have evaluated the data structure just as far as we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these const cells. We also have their numbers so if you follow the, the first the arrow of the first component that's the element at that point in the list we see it's two, three and so on and then the second component of this Heap structure is of course the tail, the next element of or the next part of the list. And if we follow that down all the way here, we end up with another thunk. But what's all this? What's all this? Lots of thunks, it's kind of unclear what's going on. So let's um, let's start again. So we um, we unadd, we add, we clear the view, we view the primes, it's now We add the sieve, um, we view the primes, and it's now a thunk again. So one thing we can, oh, so far we've been evaluating this expression on by using take and, and null and these things um, in the REPL. One thing we can do in this view here on the left is we can actually click on things to evaluate a certain thunk. And that allows us to do something that we can't do otherwise, namely we can start evaluating thunks that are not actually reachable. So we know that the, okay, the list is now non-empty and here's another thunk. And if you would start to looking at the list uh, using using take, for example, on, in GHGI, then we would be starting to evaluate this thunk and probably maybe trigger this thunk. But what we can do here is we can see, okay, there's a one thunk and refers another thunk. What is this thunk? And if we just keep clicking on this thunk here, it becomes pretty clear what this is. It's just the enumeration for numbers from well, I guess it started with two and then a three, four, five, and so on. Uh, the one that's here is probably the increment. That's at least my guess. And if we um, look here, then very good guess this is this expression that we are validating. Now, if that is the list from two and so on, then this thing is very likely going to be the function thief, thief that we passed down here. Uh, to see what's happening, if we evaluate this function. Oh, now it's creating two thunks. Okay, that's interesting. 
So the and again we can now first look at the inner thunk to see what's happening and try to get understanding what this is doing. So this is a thunk. It refers to our list from two and so on. Um, and it refers to another function which refers to the number two. And it's the same two that we have put in the list. Okay. So what if we click this? Okay. It seems to be producing uh, another list. So it seems to be taking in this list and then producing this other list. But if you look at what it does for the elements, if the element is even, a multiple of the two that we have here, then it gets swallowed and we just pass by pass through the nine. Um, so this seems to be some kind of filter. And again, let's compare with the with the C function. Well, it, that looks quite a bit like this thing. So it's going through some list and it's taking only those elements that are not a multiple of P here, which probably happens to be the number that we have down here. Okay, let, let's try to verify this hypothesis. So um, let's get this bit further down. Okay, so these are all odd numbers, very likely, if we filter all multiples of two. If we look at this thing again, we, we get the again, we get two things. And the second one looks pretty much like the one we had before. So it seems to be a function, seems to be referring to the number two. So if we go and start evaluating that thunk. So the seven gets passed through. The nine gets swallowed and we get 11. We always get something. We can't just stop halfway. So again, 13, that should go through. Yeah, it shows up here. And then the 15 is multiple of three should disappear if we pass the thunk. Okay. And now what is this very first thing? It always seems duplicating. Well, if we look again at our code, that is the function thief because it's looking at a list um, which it's annoying. Sorry. Okay, so this is um, this this thing is the application of thief to some list to the non-empty list it seems, and it's doing two things. It's um, producing one of these filtering things, and that's what we've seen, we've the two, the three, and so on. And then it's wrapping the whole thing again in itself. So see if it's calling um, itself recursively. So by that logic, if you click on this thing, we should see that it creates two things. One is filtering by five. The other one is probably what we've just seen. And the five here, if you look compare with the equation on the right, that should move, um, Oh no, it already has moved above. So if you click here, we now have this, um, this filter that removes all multiples of five and we got the extra chunk. So this filter that removes all multiples of five, um, if you start evaluating that, it'll trigger the evaluation of all the other filters that we've seen. So now we have all the numbers that are not multiple of two and three and five. And then uh, if we start continuing here, we would get another filter and we would get the next prime number into our list. So every time we click on this thunk, we get the next prime number into our list and we get a new filtering thunk added to this other thing. So now we have the 11, now we have 13 and so on. And we see that as the list of prime numbers that we produce grows, we also have a ever increasing number of filters that remove multiples of of that particular prime number from the initial list that we had here. And if I create this list, it actually looks pretty nice and symmetric. So you can actually, from this inspection, guess the um, complexity of this algorithm. Uh, it's producing, it's getting slower and slower. So uh, to, to look at the 1000th prime, uh, we'd have to look at the next number in this list and then pass it through 1000 filters. And you can read up on better, better ways of doing that. Um, I mean, this is not about producing prime numbers efficiently. This was really about uh, having a peek inside how infinite A structures look in Haskell, about how this particular code looks in Haskell, and how it works inside 
and how you can ex experiment and experience these kinds of algorithms uh, if you use a tool like ghgvis. And it's written ghgvis, uh, which you yeah, can just install and then play around with the things. Thank you for attention. And if you like that, uh, leave a comment, tell me what you want to hear about more. And um, maybe there's more of it. Thank you.